It is rare for a titan of physics to contradict a theory that has been accepted as true by many generations of physicists. However, according to a recent paper by Roy Kerr, the dreadful singularity at the center of the black hole may have met this fate. Maybe a few hundred years ago, Isaac Newton discovered the principles of gravity. Suddenly, many enigmatic phenomena, such as the reasons why apples fall from trees and the motions of the planets and stars, made sense. However, this discovery also gave rise to a new and even stranger mystery. It raised the issue of black holes, whose paradoxical nature still permeates modern physics. Einstein's update to Newtonian gravity seemed to confirm the theoretical prospect of black holes, and it also revealed something even more challenging to physics, the first solution to the general relativity equations. It hinted at the possibility that the gravity of a sufficiently dense object could produce an event horizon, a surface of no escape able to hold prisoner light itself. Many, if not most, physicists were extremely uncomfortable with the idea of black hole singularities when, in 1965, British physicist Sir Roger Penrose demonstrated that singularities in general relativity are actually inevitable. His Henro Singularity Theorem, for which he was awarded the 2020 Nobel Prize, states that as long as an event horizon exists, so must the singularity. The shield solution hinted that at the very center of the black hole there is a singularity at this hypothetical point of infinite density and infinite gravity. At the scale of the singularity, our two supreme theories of the physical world prove themselves mutually incompatible. The singularity theorem's most significant implication may be that general relativity and quantum mechanics are fundamentally at odds. If this is the case, the only way to escape the paradox of the singularity would be a more comprehensive theory that unites quantum mechanics and general relativity, in which case the singularity would vanish as if it were only the delusions of naive 20th century physicists. However, more recently, a ray of hope from an entirely unexpected direction has emerged. In a paper published in December, Roy Kerr, one of the greatest black hole theorists of all time, may have demonstrated that we can avoid the black hole or singularity without quantum mechanics because, ultimately, to arrive at this radical new conclusion. We must acquire some understanding solely before the Penrose singularity theorem, it was generally believed that geodesics had no end. An object might travel along a segment of a geodesic, for example, a ball being thrown on a parabola. But the geodesic itself can be traced both backwards and forwards beyond the ball's trajectory. Nevertheless, Roger Penrose didn't exactly prove the existence of singularities, not explicitly, anyway. He demonstrated that spacetime paths must terminate inside a black hole. Geodesics inside a black hole must converge at its center and terminate there, as demonstrated by Roger Penrose. When a spacetime admits geodesics that end, we say that the spacetime is geodesically complete. Geodesics can be thought of as spacetime's grid lines, which together provide a smooth, albeit occasionally somewhat twisted, fabric on which the laws of physics operate as intended. Penrose argued that geodesic incompleteness means singularity, citing pinched-off regions where infinitesimals appear and the laws of physics break down. Kerr, however, has an objection to the argument that hinges on a nuanced interpretation of Jewish incompleteness. Let's take a closer look at this. When Penner said that a Judas captured by a black hole ends at the black hole center he meant something very specific mathematically he meant that the geodesic parameter is bounded so the mathematical variable we use to describe the evolution of something along the geodisc terminates similar to how your L attitude terminates if you travel to the south pole you can't go further south once your south is maxed out. For the Judas describing the paths of matter the Judas parameter can be and usually is. Taken to be the proper time that's just the time measured by someone moving along that trajectory so if the parameter for a matic is bounded that would imply a singularity because there's no way to detrace the flow of time through that point there's no meaningful way to define after the singularity in either space or time these are dead ends in spacetime now Penrose constructed his argument using the paths of light, not matter, and it turns out the difference is actually crucial, as we'll see. However, the general argument that G.Y. King's completeness equals a singularity was convincing enough that for nearly 60 years, Almost all of us agreed that pure general relativity demands singularities. Roy Kerr was skeptical of Stephen Hawking's use of Penrose's reasoning to demonstrate that, in pure geometry, the Big Bang was likewise a singularity because all geodesics traced backward in time had to converge and finish at some point. To put it mildly, Kerr is a new physicist from New Zealand who discovered the Kerr metric in 1963. This is the mathematical description of a rotating black hole and is only the second black hole solution to the Einstein equations to be discovered. It was discovered 47 years after the KLSW shield solution, which only describes the much simpler case of a non-rotating black hole. Since we have good reason to believe that almost all real black holes have some rotation, 
the sea solution and Roy Kerr's disagreement, that singularities exist or even that the Panner singularity theorem has anything to say about them, are somewhat significant. Let's finally get to the core of the objection, which is that gistic incompleteness has been interpreted to mean that space-time paths are Panner used a specific kind of Jody to build his case. The space-time routes that massless objects traveling at light speed take are known as the null geodesic. The shortest path between two points in curved space is represented by a null geodesic. Alright, so what does that mean? It means that for a null geodesic to terminate, its GC parameter must be bounded and not increase forever. In the case of massive particles, we use proper time to trace these regular jicks, but since objects traveling at the speed of light perceive no time at all, their clocks remain frozen. Proper time does not increase. In order to characterize the GGZ motion of light, we require a new measurement. We employ what is known as a fine parameter, which is a little complex, but the important point is that it rises in a neat and orderly manner to follow progress along a dizzy her notes note that these fine parameters don't track time in a meaningful way and so don't imply that the grid of spacetime falls apart at the point of analogy. Penrose's theorem very convincingly shows that AE parameters are bound inside black holes, and so null geodesics end. He then took this to infer the inevitability of singularities as dead ends in the grid of spacetime. The AIM parameter might be an exponential of coordinate time, as this function is bounded, to crudely illustrate this. Roy Kerr contends that from below, even if time can travel from minus to plus infinity, the limit of a defined parameter does not imply that time itself stops. He further contends that this refutes any claims about the likelihood of singularities resulting from dead ends in the coordinate system. Although sardonic to say the least, Kay's article is enjoyable to read as he repeatedly chastises the physics community for blindly adhering to the conclusion that the United States is founded on sand. To your amusement, I have included a link to the paper in the description. The distinction between real black holes and the idealized black holes examined in the Penrow paper is another crucial aspect of Kerr's argument. Essentially, and possibly literally, all real black holes must have some rotation because real astrophysical black holes will obey the Kerr metric rather than the SWA shield, and the same argument can be extended for charged black holes. Kerring maintains that even this isn't a true singularity. Curved black holes don't have a point-like singularity in their center in the Kerr metric, instead, the point singularity is stretched out into a ring singularity, a looping thread of infinite curvature. The other interesting thing about the Kerr metric is that, Unlike the SWA shield black hole, there is a region just below the Kerr event horizon where collapse is actually inevitable across the horizon or paths lead down similarly to those in the SWA shield black hole but not to the center. In a rotating black hole, gravity is counteracted by the centrifugal force of spinning spacetime, creating this inner region of almost normal spacetime. There is also an inner horizon in the Kerr black hole, and once you cross it, you're free to move in any direction, even back up. So what's this ring singularity? KR implies that it's a mathematical fiction, it's just a convenient way to represent the gravitational field generated by a rotating object and he suggests that a true collapsed star would exist as an extended physical form inside the inner horizon of the Ketri. K nails down his argument by demonstrating that, contrary to the conclusion of the Penrow singularity theorem, not all null geodesics terminate at the singularity in the Kerr black hall. Even if the fine parameter is finite, he reveals these families of geodesics that pass the inner horizon of the black hole and continue to exist forever and trace out really any path inside the black hole without having to hit the supposed singularity and stop existing this is contrary to the previous belief that, like crossing any black holes on the horizon, you have to end up at the supposed singularity in the center. That's if this ring singularity in the curved black hole even exists as a meaningful entity rather than a mathematical convenience, as Roy Kerr believes. So what does all of this really mean for the existence of singularities? It's crucial to realize that Kay's argument suggests that the findings of the singularity theorem proof might not be true, not that singularities don't exist. In contrast to the popular interpretation of the Penrose singularity theorem, it states that bounded AIN parameters for NISIC don't always indicate a singularity. This paper is surprising because it may provide a way to overcome the singularity without waiting for that elusive theory of quantum gravity. While not many physicists genuinely believe that black HW singularities exist, the majority of them believe that we would need to apply quantum mechanics to understand why. While there is still work to be done to determine whether case theories hold up to inspection, we can be sure that there will be some heated debates on both sides. For the time being, however, we now have theoretical grounds to be less fearful about the interiors of black holes without singularities. With Roy Kerr's new theories, perhaps we can begin to establish reasonable physics about what occurs in their interiors. A singularity makes speculative space travel a little safer for physicists. 
No Cost Spacetime would like to express its gratitude to the audience for their support of the program, which includes not only purchasing merchandise from the store but also leaving comments, subscribing, and loving it. We especially want to thank our loyal Patreon supporters. We're grateful to our Patreon supporters for helping us make the show possible. As a special thank you, we're offering all Patreon members a permanent 10% discount on merchandise, and we're opening up our upcoming live stream AMA to all paid Patreon levels. Additionally, if you join us on Patreon, you'll have access to the Spacetime Discord channel, where we discuss Spacetime 247. To join, click the link in the description. Thank you.